Hello. Hi, it's Nicole. I am here for Interrupt Training Tuesday. And today I am really excited to be talking about a subject that I am really personally passionate about. It's professional development. So I'm just gonna give it a couple minutes to see if anyone is joining us live. This will be up on YouTube after probably a couple of hours later tonight, really when I get home. <laughs> we'll have some great tips to share for professional development. Hey, Clark, nice to see you. See if anybody else is gonna be joining us. Hi, GKBC1, hello. As people are joining in on Interrupt Training Tuesday, feel free to add where you're coming from uh, and what your name is. And we'll get started in just a minute. From the UK, hi, welcome. So yeah, we'll be getting started in just a minute uh, and sharing some of my personal favorite free professional development tips and tricks and, uh, and resources that are out there. This is a subject that I am incredibly passionate about. I've spoken at a couple of conferences about the need for professional development in the interpretive world. Um, specifically, we're going to be talking about development in interpretation. So as a naturalist or an environmental educator, uh, really anywhere in that field, a public speaker as well, anyone in sort of visitor experience would benefit from this. And specifically, I'm going to be sharing some free resources that are out there in terms of what interpreters can take advantage of in their field, regardless of whether they're heritage interpreters or natural interpreters, uh, but free resources that I have found that really, really help my own personal interpretation. So this is coming specifically from my own personal experience. It's gonna be short and sweet. I don't wanna take any more than probably 10 to 15 minutes of your time, 10 when we actually really get started. Uh, and um, if you wanna know more on this subject, if you're interested in learning more about professional resources that are out there for interpreters, I've written a couple of blogs on the subject at Don Enright's blog. He's an incredible master interpreter and his website is just www.donenright, D-O-N-E-N-R-I-G-H-T dot com. Uh, that in and of itself, his website, his blog, is an incredible free resource for interpreters. He's been doing a really great series on the visitor experience and finding your interpretive voice lately. So that would be probably the first tip that I would give. And I think let's get started. We've given people a little bit of time to join us if they're going to. Hello, Interpretation Australia. I saw you sign in. Nice to see you. So I want to share my free tips and resources for your own personal and professional development. And I do say personal development because I think it's really important to remember in our profession, you put a lot of yourself into your interpretation. Um, and Clark is making a very good point that heritage interpretation does include nature. Yes, thank you, Clark. I think I was meaning more so historical interpretation or natural interpretation, although the case could be made that all forms of interpretation could include all others. So we'll focus really on resources that are appropriate for all interpreters. Um, and like I was saying, Dawn's blog is, is a great resource. There are a lot of other interpretive blogs out there. For those of you who are joining us who are already in the chat, um, if you know of any great interpretive blogs out there, can you comment on those? Or if you're watching this on YouTube a little bit later, please add them in the comments. Hi, we've got someone from Miami joining us. If you're an interpreter and you know a great resource blog on interpretation, feel free to shout that out in the comments below and I'll try and read them as we go. Um, I am sort of new to the blogosphere and also reading blogs, so it's not a place that I go to get a ton of my information. I have been relying more for free interpretive resources on podcasts. They are free. First and foremost, I am also a commuter. I, it takes me almost an hour to get to work and then an hour at the end to go home. So I've got two hours of my day built in for professional and personal development. And it's important to recognize that however you develop yourself as a person, it's going to 
influence and help your development as a professional. So I listen to a lot of podcasts on my commute that help me in all areas of my profession. I listen to science podcasts because I am a science interpreter. Uh, I listen to a few different podcasts on management because I manage interpreters in the visitor experience. So a couple of my favorites are Creating Disney Magic. I'm a huge Disney fan just generally. Um, and if you're looking for great visitor experience, Disney is is one of the tops out there in creating that visitor experience. So that's a great, great podcast. Um, Coaching for Leaders is another podcast that I've really been enjoying lately. And um, Manager Tools, really simple and easy title there. Thank you very much. So this is definitely a great resource for interpretive managers looking for management podcasts. But ultimately, I would encourage interpreters, no matter what their field, to find something that speaks to them about their resource whether it's a podcast, whether it's a blog, whether it's books going to the library. I am actually broadcasting today from the Vancouver Public Library. Um, So I spend a lot of my time in the library. And it's a great place to find resources on your resource, whatever that happens to be, whatever it is that you're interpreting. I think that my best advice when it comes to finding an ideal professional development source for you that's free is start with what you're interested in. Obviously, whatever drew you to your site where you're an interpreter, um, to your field of interpretation is going to be something that's interesting to you. Try and learn even more about it. Chances are you know a lot. Look for that extra edge on that subject. Do that deep digging on the internet. Also, if you know of an area in your field or in your sort of area of interpretation that's interesting to you but that you don't know a lot about, something maybe that you want to find interesting, that's another great place to start. Ask someone else in your site what their favorite book is on a subject. If you want to find a historical event interesting, ask the people around you what they think is probably the best resource to start with. So those are my top three in terms of sort of like information resources that are free, podcasts, blogs, check out your local library. But there's also a few other great resources for interpretation that are taking off as a result of social media. Um, Obviously I'm really passionate about professional development because I started this training Tuesday idea, sharing interpreters skills for free on Periscope, posting them up on YouTube afterwards. And no, I'm I'm not currently planning on doing a PhD, although thank you for asking. Um, And it's it's an area that I think is really important and that you learn just as much from and you get just as much development from doing the training yourself as the people who actually participate in the training. It's a different type of development, but it's good to put yourself out there and uh, and try new things. So if any of you who are watching this want to try running one of these trainings, you don't have to be an expert in anything. Um, It's just an opportunity for you to practice your skills and share something that you are passionate about. Maybe you don't consider yourself an expert, but I guarantee that you have something unique to someone else out there to share in a new and different perspective. So if you're interested in never running your own training Tuesday, uh, just get in touch with me. You can send me an email, you can comment below and seek me out, or you can find me on Facebook, and I'd be happy to help you get set up with that. Speaking of Facebook, there are some other really great free interpretive resources there, namely groups. I belong to, I think it's seven or eight different interpretive Facebook groups, and they are some of my favorite places to get lost. (laughs) Um, Namely, the interpretive theme writing think tank is probably one of my favorites currently. Um, There's also a few others that the National Association for Interpretation puts together uh, for certified interpretive guides or certified interpretive trainers. If any of you who are on the scope right now are familiar with these groups or know of any others that maybe you want to share, feel free to add those in the comments below um, and I'll read them out as they show up. Or if you just love the ones that I've mentioned, feel free to tap the screen a couple of times just so I know if you've ever had the experience of trying out some of these Facebook groups. They're 
sort of like, well, as one of them is even called, they're sort of like think tanks. They're great minds in one space, all sharing and swapping ideas on really anything in, within the field of interpretation. It's a great place. If you're struggling with writing a theme, throw it up into the think tank and thank you very much. And and see what people come up with. Ask for feedback in your program development, especially now that Facebook has the opportunity to have videos. Throw up a video of something that you're working on and the, the experts and coworkers and colleagues in that group will be really forthcoming with feedback for you. Interpretation Australia, yes, thank you. They have a great Facebook page that I've only just started playing around with. Um, Interpretation Canada, since I'm from Canada, has another really, really awesome Facebook page that you can like and comment on. A lot of interpretive organizations around the world are starting to play with social media in really new and exciting ways. And I think that's just gonna benefit us as interpreters. And personally, I hope that it's actually going to change the way in which we think about professional development. Because truthfully, the problem that I've encountered a lot, both as an interpreter myself and as an interpretive manager, is that getting buy-in for professional development, which is so crucial to our roles and staying at the cutting edge of what it is that we're doing, staying good at your job, ultimately not just getting better, but staying good at your job. That's why I love professional development so much. The hardest part about getting buy-in from that is that it costs money and time. We usually think of it as conferences and courses, and those are both really time intense and, and resource intense if you're paying for travel, especially. So I really hope that the more that interpretive organizations start playing around with social media and with free usage online, the more different types of professional development we're going to be able to start to recognize. So like I said, folks, I wanted to keep this really short and sweet for you today and just sort of share a couple of my favorite go-to free resources for interpretation, regardless of what area of interpretation you're in. Um, oh, I forgot one actually that I just found out. Sorry about the coughing. Um, is TED Talks, which I love just in and of themselves. And I think probably most of you are familiar with TED Talks online. They have a podcast now. So if you are a commuter like me and you're on the SkyTrain or the bus and using your data to watch TED Talks online is not really something that's affordable to you, well, now there's a free podcast and there have been some really, really great ones lately. So that's probably the last thing that I'll, I'll leave you with is looking for those resources uh, that really speak to you, that you're passionate about, whether they be blogs or websites or podcasts or Facebook groups or just visiting your local library or, or any other sort of place where you can go and indulge in that inner child who just wants to learn everything. <laughs> so I want to thank you all very much for joining me for another Interpret Training Tuesday. Thank you for watching online, for those of you who are joining us on YouTube a little bit later, and for those of you who are here live, thanks very much. If you have any additional resources that you would like to add, feel free to comment below on YouTube, and we'll be happy to hear them. Thanks a lot, and have a great day.